welcome to the Amazon Web Services webinar entitled FedRAMP High and AWS GovCloud US, Meeting FISMA High Requirements in the Cloud. I'd like to introduce our speakers. Keith Brooks is Senior Business Development Manager of the AWS GovCloud region for Amazon Web Services. In this role, Keith is responsible for strategy, go-to-market, partnerships, growth, and adoption of the AWS GovCloud region. Alan Halafni is Senior Manager of Solutions Architecture Specialist in the public sector in AWS. In this capacity, Alan leads a team of domain experts providing deep domain knowledge in areas such as security and compliance, networking, high-performance computing, data science, and geospatial information systems. So let's begin. Keith? Thanks, Leila. Let's dive right in. As announced at our AWS Public Sector Summit in June, AWS cloud adoption in the public sector continues to grow. We have over 2,300 government agencies, 7,000 education institutions, and 22,000 nonprofits all using the AWS cloud. And these customers leverage our global infrastructure that spans the world, which includes 13 regions, 35 availability zones, and 56 edge locations. And many of our U.S. public sector customers use one of those regions, in particular, our AWS GovCloud U.S. region. AWS GovCloud U.S. is an isolated AWS region that is intended for customers with strict regulatory and compliance requirements and sensitive data or workloads. We launched the region in August of 2011 with a focus on addressing multiple U.S. government regulations and security requirements to enable customers to move their most sensitive data and workloads to the cloud. We will discuss these compliance features in more detail shortly. AWS GovCloud customers span many sectors and industries. The core user is the U.S. government to include federal, state, and local government agencies. Beyond the U.S. government, qualified organizations in other sectors and industries also use GovCloud for their regulated and sensitive workloads to include education institutions, nonprofits, and research organizations, Organizations in government regulated industries such as aerospace, defense, energy, manufacturing, and healthcare. System integrators and consulting firms, both for delivering capabilities to their end customers and for internal enterprise IT needs. And a robust and growing ecosystem of technology firms, leading software vendors, and managed service providers that offer third party solutions built and hosted on GovCloud. And these customers are using GovCloud to host a wide variety of workloads, such as web applications and websites, backup and recovery, archiving, and disaster recovery workloads, development test environments, business and mission critical systems and applications, big data analytics and high performance compute workloads, and a growing number of mobile oriented applications across different use cases, such as law enforcement and public safety and IoT. The common thread across many of these customers and their workloads is that they are storing data defined by the U.S. federal government as Controlled Unclassified Information, or CUI. Our GovCloud customers are using the region for workloads across all categories of CUI to include export control data, unclassified intelligence data, nuclear data, financial, tax, and statistical data, critical infrastructure workloads, sensitive intellectual property data, patent and copyright data, legal data, and privacy or PII data. And they choose to host workloads involving CUI data on GovCloud because GovCloud is all about compliance in the cloud. GovCloud addresses a number of U.S. government regulations and compliance requirements, such as FedRAMP, which is the focus of today's webinar, ITAR, or the International Traffic and Arms Regulation, the DoD Cloud Security Requirements Guide Security Policy, or SRG, the Department of Justice Criminal Justice Information Services Security Policy, or CJIS, HIPAA, SOC and ISA requirements, and several NIST requirements to include FIPS 140-2, as well as NIST Special Publication 800-53 and 800-171 requirements governing U.S. federal information systems and data. As mentioned, the focus of today's webinar is FedRAMP, specifically GovCloud's recent accreditation for FedRAMP High. 
And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Alan Bachman, to discuss GovCloud and FedRAMP High and how to meet FSMA high requirements on the AWS cloud. Alan? Thank you, Keith. So why don't we start with uh, background on the policy framework from which uh, FedRAMP derives. In 2002, the Federal Information Security Management Act, FSMA, was enacted as Title III of the E-Government Act. It directed that the Secretary of Commerce, through the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, prescribe standards and guidelines for federal information and information systems. As a standards organization, uh, NIST generated mandatory standards called Federal Information Processing Standards, or FIPS, and guidelines called Special Publications, or SPs, to address the requirements of FSMA. NIST, however, is not an oversight or enforcement body. Those responsibilities are left to the Office of Management and Budget. Fundamental to FSMA is the notion that each agency is responsible for accepting risk for federal information systems through an authorizing official and issuance of an authority to operate. NIST SP 837 defines the risk management framework an information and information system lifecycle framework used by the federal government as a result of FSMA. FIPS 199 defines the standard for categorizing federal information and information systems as low, moderate, or high impact, with SP 860 providing detailed guidance. Similarly, FIPS 200 defines minimum security requirements and directs the use of SP 853, which contains detailed control guidance. SP 800-137 captures Information System Continuous Monitoring, or CONMON guidance, also relative to the RMF. NIST 853-REV4 is one of the most cited NIST special publications. It defines the control baselines for the three FSMA impact levels. Developed by NIST, the Department of Defense, the Intelligence Community, and the Committee on National Security Systems known together as the Joint Task Force, it covers 18 control families. The document reflects the output of a rigorous comment and review process that was engaged both with government and public sector constituents. Each control contains a specification, supplemental guidance, and baseline alignment. Many controls also list control enhancements. FedRAMP builds upon NIST 853, adding controls that speak to the particular needs of federal agencies operating in multi-tenant cloud environments. Many of the controls in the NIST 853 are prescriptive, but with required tailoring. Agencies are free to tailor controls to meet their mission and operational needs. For example, if an agency had systems that, through mission operation, were not network connected for months at a time, the agency would have the latitude to modify the controls related to system patching. As another example, agencies are free to diverge in their minimum password requirements. Historically, every agency had slightly different requirements and slightly different templates for documenting compliance with these password requirements under FSMA. In a multi-tenant cloud environment, these differences become challenging. The FedRAMP baseline fills in the blanks on minimum controls to provide a consistent baseline across cloud providers. However, FedRAMP is only an overlay on FSMA, meaning that agencies are still the ultimate arbiters of acceptable risk. Prior to FedRAMP, each agency would have its own assessment team audit compliance with the agency-specific policies. For cloud service providers, this approach simply doesn't scale. Moreover, it's a security concern. Can you imagine a situation wherein every agent of the US federal government is plugging equipment into the infrastructure that you use to perform vulnerability and penetration testing. Probably not something you would desire. FedRAMP solves this problem by creating a consistent body of information and evidence from which agencies can assess risk. FedRAMP leverages a third-party assessment organization accredited under FedRAMP to perform a security assessment of the cloud provider. The common templates, single auditor, and unified catalog of cloud providers facilitates a do once, use many times framework for the US federal government. 
adding FedRAMP to the oh, adding FedRAMP to the overall framework, we see that it does not replace FISMA. Rather, FedRAMP builds upon FISMA. Agencies are responsible for accepting the risk of their own workloads that are running in the cloud. On June 23, 2016, AWS GovCloud US was granted a joint authorization board provisional authorization for high impact level. The new FedRAMP high baseline is mapped to NIST security controls and includes over 400 security measures. The FedRAMP high baseline applies to non-classified technology systems under FISMA with high characterized as, quote, the loss of confidentiality, integrity, or availability could be expected to have severe or catastrophic effect on organizational operations, assets, or individuals. It gives US government agencies the ability to leverage the AWS cloud for workloads with sensitive data, including PII, patient records, financial data, law enforcement data, and other controlled unclassified information. The AWS GovCloud US high baseline covers core AWS services, including EC2, EBS, IAM, S3, and VPC. As a result, customers have an instant ability to support sensitive and FISMA high workloads cost-effectively with agility at scale without compromising security or compliance. Today, AWS has multiple agencies, including the Department of Homeland Security, operating at the FISMA high impact level supporting mission critical workloads. So why is this such a big deal? FedRAMP High is an important milestone for the government and for AWS as it unlocks a number of new workloads for our customers. From a simple dollars and cents perspective, while high workloads account for only 20% of federal information systems, it absorbs fully half of the federal IT budget. Moving these highly sensitive workloads to AWS will dramatically reduce the costs of federal IT and increase agency agility. Moreover, our customers, like NASA JPL, tell us that moving to AWS actually improves their overall IT security posture. A few questions we commonly receive. While the FedRAMP JAB has performed a review of AWS GovCloud US and found it compliant with the FedRAMP high baseline, agencies are still required to accept residual risk through issuance of ATOs. Agencies authorize workloads on AWS, and their authorizations cover specific services in boundaries related to those workloads. Another question that we often get is, once an agency authorizes a workload, does that mean that all other US agencies are able to use it? And again, the answer there is no. Each agency is individually responsible for accepting risk and issuing ATOs. While FedRAMP assures that outputs are reusable between agencies, each agency is still required to perform an individual risk assessment against their mission needs and determine the appropriate level and acceptable level of residual risk. We also often get the question, about what happens if a service isn't authorized. Again, FedRAMP does not replace FISMA. FedRAMP builds upon FISMA. Agencies are still free to make independent risk-based assessments, giving flexibility for particular mission needs. If there's an AWS service that you'd like included in the FedRAMP boundary, do let us know. We will work with you to make near-term risk information available. And long-term, we do look to our customers to help prioritize the backlog of new services that we prioritize through the FedRAMP process. Some assets that you should be aware of that are available to you. If you're a US government agency, we have an AWS FedRAMP High package, which you can get from the FedRAMP program office or through AWS. You're also eligible to participate in our monthly continuous monitoring reviews. For customers and partners, we have a complete partner package that will jumpstart your efforts and ability to secure a FedRAMP high authorization on top of AWS. And for the rest of our customers and partners, we do have a series of assets in our partner ecosystem where partners can provide you capabilities to 
uh, engage with the technology and develop your security posture and your security documentation to pursue your own federal accreditation and authorization. We also have a professional services organization able to support the same. We do support and provide enterprise accelerators for compliance and AWS quick starts that can give you a jump ahead in your efforts to architect for compliance and white papers also supporting architectural patterns that we see customers leverage successfully in achieving FedRAMP outcomes. Back to you, Keith. Thanks, Alan. So how do you get started with using GovCloud to meet FedRAMP and FISMA hive requirements? First, visit our Getting Started Guide at aws.amazon.com forward slash govcloud dash us forward slash getting dash started. This page covers requirements for access to GovCloud and provides instructions for requesting access to the AWS GovCloud US region. Once qualified users are granted access, they can then begin architecting for FedRAMP High and GovCloud using the FedRAMP and AWS assets Alan just mentioned. And in closing, we want to leave you with some important links for AWS GovCloud. First, our GovCloud homepage at aws.amazon.com forward slash govcloud us. Second, our GovCloud user's guide, which can be accessed via the documentation link on the GovCloud homepage. The user's guide is a great reference for details on using the GovCloud region. Third, our AWS compliance homepage at aws.amazon.com forward slash compliance. And finally, our NIST quick start reference deployments which are intended to speed time to compliance to include meeting FedRAMP requirements. The reference deployments can be found at aws.amazon.com forward slash professional dash services forward slash enterprise dash accelerate. This concludes our FedRAMP High presentation. Thank you all for attending the webinar today. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.